got a couple of Christmas cards here and things. Uh, we got one from which uh, was David Woods Ministries, but they changed their name. Same thing, but they just changed it to uh, uh, Operation Go International. We got a Christmas card from them and uh, got one from uh, Tony and Anthony up in Oklahoma and it says to all at Calvary Baptist Church miss you guys and uh, that he's thinking about us during here during Christmas season we thank the Lord for that and then uh, got a card from uh, Brother Mark and Miss Joni and it says dear Brother Dwayne all the beloved of Calvary Baptist Church I just uh, saw in my most recent contribution report uh, where you gave us an extra uh, offering for Christmas and we thank you for your kindness and your generosity. We couldn't do what we do without you standing with us in support and prayer. We love and appreciate you in Christ, uh, Brother Mark Thrift and Sister Joni. And with that being said, Brother Mark, and I don't know if Miss Joni will be with him or not, but uh, I know that they are going to be with us this coming Wednesday night. So uh, we thank the Lord for that. Uh, in our bulletin today, um, of course, we have been collecting socks and things for the Mesquite Tree Nursing Home, and that ends today. And, uh, you know, our goal was uh, was 85 pairs of socks. And we passed that. And, and we passed that. So uh, thanks to, to each and every one. And we got all of our lotions. We got all of our blankets. We got all of our all of our socks and things, and uh, I just want to thank you for that. We will get those over to Mesquite Tree so that they can uh, be able to pass them out. Um, and we'll do that here at the first part of the week. Uh, and then uh, the church Christmas party is next Friday night, uh, the 17th, and it's at 7 p.m. Um, there is, uh, you know, a, a monetary limit on the gifts and things and it doesn't matter if, if you know just bring a gift uh, the kids and all have I have uh, drew names and, and, and got all their stuff straight so uh, just bring uh, if you're going to participate bring a gift and, and an ornament and we're going to do try to do something different this year with the ornaments so uh, kind of change it up a little bit so and we do hope all will come and enjoy each other as we do it. Uh, the church is going to take, we're going to take care of all the, the food and everything. Ex no, we're taking food. Well. Okay. We're going to, we're, all you got to do is come and enjoy your, yourself and, and, and things. And we're hoping that it's going to be a good time in the Lord for sure. And then a week from today, uh, is our candlelight service on Sunday, December the 19th at 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to have special guests with us that night. Of one accord is going to be with us, and they are going to be uh, singing and, and and things. And then we're going to have um, some other things. You can't you can't do a church candlelight unless you. You have some scripture in with it, so those things will be done as well. And and we we really look forward to everybody coming. Uh, if you're planning on coming, uh, plan on bringing somebody with you. If if you find somebody or you bring somebody with you, and uh, you know we're not charging anything. We're going to take an offering up in the middle, but all that comes in and that offering is going to go to up one accord. So uh, for their being with us. And we're looking to have a glorious time of celebrating the Lord's, uh, our Lord and Savior's birth that, uh, that night during candlelight. And our, of course, our special prayer uh, go out to those families that uh, were impacted by the tornadoes just here in the last recent days. And, uh, you know, many of them uh, don't have anything. Uh, there's, uh, they said if if that one tornado 
did trek that 250 miles as on the ground, that would be the the, the longest trek of any tornado in, in American, the United States history. And of course the town of, uh, I believe it's Maxwell, Mayfield, Kentucky is literally just, I mean, it's totally decimated, the whole town. So, you know, we, we pray for those folks uh, and things and uh, that, you know, the Lord would help to comfort them and that there wouldn't be a lot of people trying to beat their feet about trying to help me. Uh, and so, you know, we pray for them. On the back, we find a little bit about God's Christmas gift. And we find the bits and the pieces that go into, uh, as we know, a present or a gift. And the same thing applies unto the gift that the Lord, that God gave us on that first Christmas morning in the Lord Jesus. So uh, I hope that you'll read that and uh, keep that in mind as well. We'll just go ahead and continue that song this morning. Turn to page 427. Seven, we'll sing one, two, and five. We three kings and one in order. Four twenty seven. We three kings of glory and time. Bearing gifts, we traverse afar. Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Nature 
Thank you. 
make the mountains move. of God the Father. 
interceding for you and me. You know, the author uh, of A Little Town of Bethlehem, Phillips Brooks, you know, when, when we have to notice how he penned these words. We have to notice that, and before we can see it, we've got to realize that fear is something that all of us have experienced some form or fashion. And we may have experienced it in the past. We may be experiencing it today. But rest assured, it will be something that we will even experience in the days to come. But I like the way Phyllis Brooks penned these words because he, he places hope before fear. Hope before fear. When we have hope, it can chase away the fears. But every now and then, you know, it, 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 it seems like we, we like to reverse this process and allow fear to chase away our hope. But I give you this warning. According to what God's holy word says, we can have hope. And that hope can drive away, can chase away all of our fears. No matter what it may be. We may have health fears. We may have financial fears. We may have uh, job fears or or family fears, or whatever the the case is. But I'm telling you this morning that we have a hope that is right in front of us here at Christmas. And that hope of Christmas can drive away all the fears that we have. You know, fear can have a very controlling effect on us. Fear overwhelms and taunts us in the realm of the unknown. And it can leave us joyless. Fear manipulates us to react rather than act or respond in biblical proportion. Man, there were there was times about 21 years ago, everyone was gearing up. They were in fear of what was going to happen when we turned the 2000 can. What's going to happen with the banking system? What's going to happen with this or with that or whatever the case is? And you know, we, we look today and some 21 years later, we're still uh, going through the, uh, the Y2K type of thinking in our minds. You know, we'll be around and we'll be out and, and we're sitting up here and we'll be in fear of why to buy. Or perhaps even how to pay. Fear. We may be thinking, you know, well, where, 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 where am I going to be Christmas? Or what's going to happen Christmas? Or how's it going to be Christmas? I tell you, if we're trusting the hope of Christmas, we won't have to fear about any of those things. If you think about it, Christmas time should be a time of hope and joy. I don't know about you. I get, I get joy in my heart when I look at trees and decorations and lights. And I know it has nothing to do with Christmas. But it still brings joy to my spirit when I see those things. 
when I see my kids and, and my grandkids and and as they open their gifts and things at Christmas, it it brings me joy. When I think of the very hope of Christmas and why God provided us with His indescribable gift. It brings me joy. But I look and see how we can, can come and we can decorate God's house and make it beautiful. But rest assured, and I don't mean anything by this, but I want you to rest assured it's not decorated for you. It's decorated for Him. I want Him to be pleased. I want Him to like it. Because that brings me joy. So we look. You know, we're often filled with dread, anxiety, and fear. Imagine with me the what fear gripped the hearts of those involved in the very first Christmas. We find a young teenage girl praying, espoused or promised, engaged. They were basically legally married according to the death. They just hadn't consummated it yet. But they were, they were in all rights. They were married. And yet, she's with child. And it's not Joseph's. Think of the fear that grips her every time she walked out the door of her town, of our hometown. What about Joseph, the husband to be in? <laughs> He knew he wasn't the father of the baby. Think of the fear. Think of the fear that that gripped him. Not knowing the ridicule of the society, of the culture, the, the very being, not, not knowing. He knew what Mary had told him. But still, those things are hard for carpenter from Nazareth to understand. What about a shepherd? A group of nobodies making their way to see a king. And yet the king's lying in a stable. In a feed trough. Wrapped up in swaddling clothes instead of the finest linens that could be provided. There was fear in their, in their hearts as well. Each of these scenarios, fear resided. But the fear was dispelled as the angel of the Lord speaks in every circumstance. Do not be afraid. Or fear not. It's not merely the words of the angel that dispels the fear, but what is offered in place of the fear? God's grace. Think about it. No matter how much in fear they could have been, there was one thing that was overriding that fear, and it was the very grace of God. You know, His Word and the good news that He brings to all of us can override the fear no matter what it is. So take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of first off, we're going to be in it, three different places, but 
turn to Luke chapter 1. And as you find a place that stands, we read God's Word. And uh, we're going to read two verses here in Luke 1. Then we're going to go to Matthew 1. Then we'll come back to Luke chapter 2. And uh, Luke chapter 1 and verses 30 and 31, it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, it says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Go back to Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. And the angel said unto them, now he's speaking to the shepherds here, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we do come. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come into your house today. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to the reassuring of our souls today that by the very hope of Christmas, Lord, we can dispel all the fears that we may have. And Lord, I pray for these next few moments, Lord, that you would Use what would be said, Lord, and use it in a mighty way in the hearts of each and every one gathered in this place today. For Lord, there's fear in some form or another in this house today. Lord, I want each and every one to understand that. We have hope. There's no need to have fear. And it's with that that each and every one said, Amen. We may be seated. You know, we can we can come into this and uh, <clears throat> we can we can dispel fear by receiving God's good grace. Back in, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 30 and 31, we find this teenage girl and, and you know, everything that's been said to her, it troubled her. I mean, as it would you and me. We're doing whatever she was doing at this time frame, doing her, her morning uh, uh, chores or, or whatever the case is, then... You know, we look and we see and we have her. Uh, all of a sudden, she is, is in an encounter with an angel. I mean, we'd be afraid too. Because she was trying to separate the physical from the spiritual. Physically, she couldn't understand what was being told her. And spiritually, it was hard for her to accept. She knew it. She knew what prophecy had said, but it it, it, it still comes to the point of why me? So as we look in this, and we, and we find that Mary was troubled, she was disturbed, she was agitated with alarm at the, the unexpected announcement. You figure it out. 
You're sitting up here, you're 14, 15 year old girl. You are engaged. Basically, everything you're legally, in all rights, legally married and to uh, Joseph. And then all of a sudden, you're being told, hey, you're fixing to be pregnant. And you're fixing to carry a son. And it's not Joseph's son. It's God's son. And she's trying to make heads or tails out of it. How is this supposed to be? I mean, she knew the facts. She's trying to apply them to this with no avail. The news of God's choice was unsettling and, and it caused fear to swell up within her. I mean, somebody tell you, if you were a 14 year old girl, hey, you're fixing to get pregnant. You're, you're going to give birth, and what you're going to give birth to is going to be uh, the Son of God. We'd probably be afraid to. And, it, and, it, and it, would, it would well up within us, just as it did her. Fear of the unexpected can keep us from God's purpose. Now, she could have said, you know, down in verse 30, uh, uh, down in verse 38, I believe it is, she could have said, eh, no, I don't think so. I believe she had that choice. But she said, be it unto me. She was saying, Okay. She agreed with with what the angel was telling her. That she would do what he or what God had planned for her. We see in her fear Mary found God's grace. And we don't get the idea that she sits up here and she tries to, to, to tell anybody these things. Save Elizabeth. But we get the idea that, you know, there was a lot going on in her life. And then all of a sudden, you get to the very point when it's all going to happen, and now you've got to go 70, 80 miles on donkey back. Our feet down from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And, you, you know, this isn't no comfort deal here. She didn't have a, 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 a whole back seat to lay down in or, or, or 
or ambulance or care flight or whatever to take her to do whatever. No, she rode on the rigid old back of a, of a donkey, and when she wasn't doing that, she had to walk some to just get a break. And, you know, you can imagine. And it, you could see the fear, or could feel the fear, and yet, by God's grace, we also see the reassuring that He gave her. You know, our lives are not merely instruments for the telling of the Gospel. We, like Mary, have found favor. We found God's grace. We must realize that God's grace is what redeems us from the very cost of sin. It, it, God's plan of salvation was grace. God's grace removes us from the very curse of sin. God's grace releases us from the control of sin. You know, in our moments of fear, we need to receive God's good grace, which is sufficient. It is sufficient to meet our every need. And it is more than capable and able to chase away our every fear. We can look and we go in Matthew 1 in verses 20 through 21. I mean, we find uh, we can dispel the fear by receiving God's good work. You know, at times, sometimes when, when fear comes upon us, all we need is a word. All we need is God's good work. And it can override our fear. We look and, you know, Joseph's heart of having received the news of Mary being with child was filled with the fear of the unknown, basically. The only thing he didn't know was that it wasn't him. And he, all he knew was what she had told him. So we find this, this fear of the unknown. You know, have, has my fiancé, has my betrothed, has, has my Mary been unfaithful? Has, I mean, she's, she's here with child and it's not mine. I mean, I would know. What's going to happen now? You see all these fears because... When you, you go in verses 18 and 19, you see all these things that is going through his mind. But what he, he can do, or should do, or could do, or not do. All because of fear. And yet, when we look at these things, you know, I'm sure the fear of, of loss even added to what he thought was a, a hopeless situation. You know, he, in his eyes, at, at one point in this, I had a beautiful man that was mine. I was hers and she was mine. And we're going to spend the rest of our lives together and have children and, and all these things, you know, and now all of a sudden, have I lost Mary? Someone else? Have I lost Mary? Have I lost the love of my life? 
life? Have I, have I lost what God had led me to? To marry? The fear of the unknown can keep us from God's Word. When we don't understand something, it's easy to, to turn and, and to, to, to take God's Word and just close it up and dismiss it like, you know, it, 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 it doesn't exist. All because we don't understand. You know, God just, He wants us to keep in His Word. He wants us to be able to use His Word to chase away those fears of our lives. He wants us to use His Word so that we can rely upon His Word into the promised grace and mercy that He has in store for us. You know, we have to look and, and we have to realize that Joseph is just about to discover with God that nothing is hopeless. Nothing is hopeless. He was told by an angel not to be afraid, but to take Mary as his wife. For this was the word of God at work in his life as well as Mary's life. We don't need to be afraid of being in service unto the Lord. You know, God was uh, was being faithful to His Word and God was fulfilling His Word. We know back in the prophecies of Isaiah, Chapter 7, verse 14, he tells us about Emmanuel. That he would come, he'd be born, and, and uh, he'd be God with us. God had prophesied, he promised to come and to be with us, and he did, and he continues to be with us so today. He is with us. Today. He is still found in the whole of Christmas today. Joseph received God's word and obeyed it. If we want to have grace in our lives, if we want to be able to to have grace override our fears and things, then what we got to do is we got to take God's word and we got to obey. Just obey. Fear must not keep us from hearing and doing God's word. The Word is powerful to overcome and to drive away whatever fear is holding us captive. For God is faithful to fulfill His Word in our lives. According to Luke 11, verse 28. He is more than abundantly able. It's God's Word that gives us life. It gives us direction. It gives us hope. And it gives us strength. For it is truth. The only thing that we can do is trust in the truth. Whether that truth is, is, is what we want or not. But we've got to trust in it. We've got to put our faith in it. Because if we'll trust in the truth of God, the fears of our life can be overridden by the hope that He provides. And 
our times of fearing the unknown. We need to receive God's good word and keep it and watch fear flee from us. So Joseph did as the Lord had wanted. Brings us to Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. We find that in these verses, uh, the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The shepherds, all of a sudden, with the sudden appearance of the angel, were filled with fear. You know, we, we don't know how religious they were. We know that they probably didn't worship very much because they were too busy being shepherds. We know that they didn't have a chance to go into the synagogues or, or into the temples because they would be considered unclean because of the job that they had and some of the things that they had to do in that job. They probably weren't the most educated of people. They probably weren't the most clean people. They sure probably weren't the best uh, mannered people. I mean, after all, the only people you got to get along with are your fellow shepherds. And your sheep. So these shepherds, they, 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 uh, all of a sudden the Bible tells us they, uh, an angel appeared unto them, and as uh, strong or as capable as they were, and, you know, they, they, they faced lions and bears and all that stuff, they were afraid. Life had quickly become the unordinary. Filled with great fear, according to verse number 9 in Luke chapter 2. Fear of things being uh, futile can keep us from God's joy in life. Cowering beneath the glory of God, the angel proclaims good news rather than bad news. Think about it. Hey, unto you this day, you know, we could think of anything that would be worse, but unto you this day is born a Savior. And He's come to save all people. That includes you. The temple may not let you in, but Christ our Lord will let you in. Proclamation was life. It wasn't death. It, it didn't. It didn't bring death. It brought life with it. I mean, think about it. You're sitting here on the hillside, and the sheep. Sheep are used for one thing. They were either a sacrifice, or they're put on somebody's plate. Either way it goes, it ended in death. But what they were being told was the proclamation of life was being told to them. The very good news of, of life that chased away all their fears. The good news is, is that God brings great joy. He doesn't bring great fear into our lives. He brings great joy into our lives. forgiven us of our sin. God's good word has told us 
to consider it done. God's good news was given or has given us purpose to live in. Just think of what our lives would be if we didn't have the good word. Think of what our lives would be if we didn't have the good news. Think of what our lives would be if all we had to look forward to was the cold ground. We got hope. We got joy unspeakable. And and why? Because of God's plan. Because of God's grace. Because of God's mercy. Because of what a heavenly Father would do for His children. What a Creator would do because He loves His creation. We may not understand it all. But we can trust it all. All our fears, our frustrations, the very uh, utility uh, with life was met at Christmas. And it was met in the Savior that was born that blessed morning. Worship transforms us. It pushes away our fears and releases us to come closer to God. Look at verse number 20. It says, And the shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. So we get the idea before they weren't in the they weren't out in the hillsides worshiping and praising God. You know, they're out in the hillside probably, boy, I'll be glad when we get rid of these stinking sheep. I'm about getting tired of this stuff. And I need to get into town. You know, we kind of we could put it in our days as like uh, uh, back in the old west days of the, of the men on a cattle drive, you know. Man, we gotta, I got to get back into town. I wish we'd hurry up and get where we're going. Can you imagine? I'm not saying that's what they did, but you get the idea that they probably did. You and I probably would have. Would we not? Man, I sure would love to take a hot bath. Sure would love to eat something besides mud. herbs or whatever it is, you know, they had. In our times of fearing the worst to happen, let us receive God's good news and allow it to impact our situation. To dispel the fear to chase it out, to, to remove it from our hearts and from our minds. The hopes and fears of all the year are met in thee tonight. I give this this morning, I wonder what fear holds you in that's got a hold of you today. this morning has met the Savior. Not, not uh, who not only meets our fears head on, but has won the victory over them. Do you realize that victory is out? You can't have fear when you got victory. All you have is joy. Joy. God in the flesh 
is the end of fear. It's kind of like a child that's unnerved in the darkness. God has come to you and I. He's come to this world with the light that calms and chases away our fears. Because that's the kind of God we serve. You know, when it, it, it's one thing to have a God that knows that we got fears. But it's a whole different story when we have, when we have a God that knows that we have fears and then supplies us with the hope that can overcome them. That hope was born on Christmas morning. That hope led a sinless life. It was that same hope. nailed to an old rugged cross one day. Not for anything he had done. But what you and I had done. He was chasing away our fear. You can't have a cradle. You can't have a manger without a cross. And you certainly can't have a cross without a man. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God wants for us. Because if we'll be that, because we're trusting God for it, we're hoping God for it. We won't have no fear. Whatever the world can throw at us, we can take it. Because all we got to realize is we're just walking through this place. This world is not my home. I've got a, I've got a place reserved for me. What does it look like? I ain't got an idea. But I know if God prepared it, it's something. Yeah. Amen. So we need to let the power of God's good grace work in us this Christmas to chase away, to dispel our fears. Let the love of God's good work in you, work in you this Christmas to dispel the fear. Let the soundness of God's good news work in you this Christmas to chase away your fears. I don't think that we could have it any other way. We have to realize today just how much God truly loves us. Because he's provided us a way to chase our fears from us. He provided us with a Savior. The hope of Christmas. Let's all stay. Heavenly Father. Lord, we come and we open your treasure work. And Lord, we we go to places. In Scripture, I believe, Lord, that, that you have placed in there for our benefit. To tell us, Lord, that we're not to be in fear. But we're to trust in the hope of Christmas because it can chase away our fears. Lord, this Christmas, I mean, Lord, 
it's a busy time. And Lord, there are a lot of fears out there. A fear of traveling around. A fear of getting robbed. A fear of this. A fear of that. Lord, I, I, I beg of You that You would help us to realize that if we'll place our hope in the hope of Christmas, that it will chase away our fear. we can stand and we can rejoice and we can be joyful this Christmas season because we're standing in your grace and in your mercy and in your love and in your peace beyond all understanding Lord I pray that you would help us to realize these things and Lord that that what we've heard that we can apply to our hearts as we leave this place and that it would forever change us Lord Lord let not the, this, the Christmas season the Christmas story Lord the very birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ just be something of though I've heard that a hundred times Lord, let it be something fresh and new. Because we stand in a newness of grace each and every day. Use this uh, imitation time, Lord, as only You can. Speak to our hearts today. Let us see what you'd have for us to do. Page 277. serve a, a God that wants us to just trust in Him and not trust in the things of this world. But trust in Him. Because it's only Him that will bring joy. Things of this world may be may bring joy for a while, but it's short lived, for sure. But in Christ Jesus, we have joy unspeakable. We have a Savior that loves us, cares for us, wants us to put our hope in Him. You know, we 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 look, and at times we. We tend to do things and we will put our hope and or put our our all that we are into something that can't carry us. I mean, at times, at the, even the best of cars are going to break down. At times, even the best of health is going to break down. At times, 
the, the very best of, of family and things are going to break down. But the hope in the Lord Jesus never falters. He is the same. He is the one that was, that is, and is yet to come. He is the same yesterday as He is today as He will be tomorrow. The same babe that was born in the manger some 2,000 some odd years ago is still the same one that we can put our trust and our hope in today. Nothing's changed. The God we serve is still God. We're going to be back into uh, our study in Luke this evening. So I hope that you'll come and, and be a part of that as well. And uh, just remember, we got some uh, Remark Beer Wednesday. We've got uh, a Christmas party on Friday and then candlelight on Sunday evening. So uh, all those things are, are coming up and, and all that. So I hope that you know, you'll be sure and mark those things. And, and come and be a part of each and every one of them. So let's uh, let's pray, and we can be dismissed this evening, Lord. We or this morning, Lord. We we do come thanking you, Lord, for your many blessings, Lord. We we ask that that you would continue, Lord, to give us hope, Lord, that'll dispel our fears, drive them away. Lord, I pray that. This Christmas, Lord, that we can look to the hope of Christmas. We can look to and still believe in the babe that was born in a manger. We can still believe in the man that hung on a cross. We can still believe in the one that was resurrected and now sits on the right hand of God the Father and he intercedes for us daily. Lord, that's our hope. Lord, help us to see it each and every day. Lord, we love You. We thank You. Take us from this place. Apply what we've heard to our hearts, Lord, as we leave and use it in a mighty way. For it's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen.